part one there, and if you'll notice in part one, I did something that you noticed that in the beginning it was more of a full tank knife. Ended up making it a rat tail on purpose because I had some deer antlers and I thought, you know what, that was a more, or it wasn't a more common, but it was a common thing that you would see. So I kind of wanted to go ahead and put a deer antler stag as far as the handle for it. So I went ahead and I changed it up and later on. So in part two, you'll see how I've pieced that thing together and went ahead and done it. And then I do a little beating and banging and stuff. The video originally wasn't gonna be a series. It was just gonna be edit all of this stuff together and make a cool little quick two or three minute video and shoot it out there. Um, I like those when I watch videos. Most of the time, um, not bragging but I, I generally just need to see something and then I can pretty much work that into what I want to create with it um, but sometimes I know there's some videos that are very tutorial and I like to watch those as well so maybe I can see something and learn some more basics or more knowledge off of it instead of just the basics so I appreciate you guys coming in for part two stick around we're gonna slip over here and see if I can edit this video up and get it going for you see I just took a Dremel is what I did and I went ahead and I bored a hole inside of it for me to be able to slide the tang down inside of it um, I end up epoxying the glue into it to hold it as you can see I went ahead and I started doing the bevel and getting the grind on it. it's kind of a convex grind this is using an orange blaze belt um, I believe I got these from uh, American knife or something other like that they're very good for keeping the heat down um, it's not a very coarse grind it's the belt is not very fast on this thing either um, there is water as you can see over to the left of it but I don't have I don't think I dunk it but maybe three times the whole time I worked on this whole knife it never got really above working just with your fingers and hands but I wasn't really cared too much about the temper part of it so after this here got it kind of semi grinded down to where I wanted it at and then I go ahead and I start working on the handle again I put this piece in here even though I didn't use this I went with a piece of brass I just throwed it in there because that was my original plan was to go with this this is a brass threshold for a doorway. Um, I'm heating it up and I'll beat it here in just a second to get it flattened down to a piece. After I got it flattened out enough to work with, I went ahead and shaped it up. It's just basically going to be a finger guard is what it's really for. I go ahead and I shape it up, basically cut it off, and then go ahead and get my round part. Because I went with this more round and then flat at the top of it. And I shaped it up is all I did and used the sander a little bit as well. Now I'm basically drilling a couple of holes inside of it and getting it shaped up so that the tank can actually slide up in between it and the actual blade itself. I use a Dremel right here, it's basically a cutting wheel to go ahead and get it etched up and finished up for the final fitting. This here is the epoxy. It's a Blade Bond 15, I believe it is. It's a 40 ounce or a four ounce kit. It's from USA Knife Makers. It works very well for holding any uh, two items together. I mean, it's a very good product. 
now epoxy in it getting it actually put down inside of it and i'll slide the tang down in it it's got about a 15 minute work time which is what i like about it you got time for any easy peasy mistakes or anything like that once i get it stuck down inside of it then we'll go on to a part three I choose to use this vise right here for any of my half tang knives, rat tail knives, or anything like that. Once you kind of hold it together, you can actually get it to where it's straight and then clamp it down. It keeps it nice and snug and it's inside of it.